February of 2017, that will be our fifth anniversary, and we're glad you're here to be with us. 350 Maine is a grassroots movement dedicated to solving the planetary climate crisis. We grow our power collectively to find real and lasting solutions, to end our dependence on fossil fuels, and to build a healthy, sustainable life for people and the planet. And we work to raise money to bring folks that are involved in other um, tar sands fights here in our country, frontline communities that are so busy trying to fight their infrastructure, like in Mobile, Alabama. We brought folks from there and as well from Houston, Texas, to come and join us um, to sort of be in community, to learn about the struggle from both perspectives of the, as I like to call it, the double headed or the two headed black snake that runs from Alberta um, through our country to port. How do we? continue to block fossil fuel infrastructure in Maine while promoting renewable energy alternatives. And we laid out three strategies that we were going to use. Town resolution. So going to communities in Maine that will be directly affected by fossil fuel infrastructure and passing resolutions or modifying ordinances so that that infrastructure can't be developed. Well, um, Portland, Oregon was the first town slash city in the country to ban fossil fuel infrastructure. There was this massive propane terminal proposed and no. instead of just stopping that one propane terminal, the whole community rallied and their city council unanimously banned any new fossil fuel infrastructure. And start thinking about what can we do regionally, statewide, and locally, municipality-wise, to block some of this infrastructure. That's really where we have to start working. We talked about extreme energy and solutions. <laughs> The framework centers on resolutions in towns, engaging with our elected officials, and also doing solutions work. And the new framework that we're exploring is um, doing fossil fuel infrastructure bans in different communities across the state. Um, currently exploring what that would look like in Portland and also reaching out to other, t other towns like Brewer, Rumford, Bangor, um, and communities that are specifically in the line of fossil fuel infrastructure. And it's sending a message to the fossil fuel industry that their time is over. That people in communities all over the place are standing up and saying, we don't want this anymore. We are ready and we are demanding a transition to the point where we're not even going to allow it in our town. She said that there was a shift around 2013 to 2014 when, I'm going to speak for you, she felt that all of a sudden it was no longer climate change that, that she was focusing on, but it became climate justice. So um, there's this concept called just transition, which is trying to support people who are in working in moving industries um, to find good unionized jobs in like building out our renewable energy um, and sustainable transportation infrastructure and all of these different pieces that we know we need to have a 100% renewable economy that is that works for people. Then we also went into the rapid response team section of a few of the potential team positions where things like being a political watchdog, a police liaison, a legal expert, and a trainer in direct action, a trainer for direct actions and funding, things like that. Maine Students uh, for Climate Justice was there, and really they've already begun the uh, uh, sort of bank confrontation work of appearing in the lobbies, uh, messaging outside, and so on, get out from under fu funding uh, pipelines. Part of our uh, focus also was, the number of us being on the, on the older end of the scale, was thinking, okay, uh, who has accounts with uh, TD Bank and Bank of America and others. The focus was on TD Bank for now. Find out who's invested in these banks. Pull out. And pull out into what? In the main local credit unions and other kind of clean banks. The communication session was exciting because there was a lot of people there who have a lot of different experiences. And we don't have an Instagram account. And apparently, we're uncool in that regard. Uh, or not quite as effective as we might be. But we need a body who has that skill set and that energy and that willingness. So it's always just trying to keep these things fluid and moving. 
Monday mornings. This has been a, a, a fond idea of mine, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G-S. People dressed in black, street theater, pick a species, any species, once a month, every Monday, dramatize it, do a eulogy, maybe with some solemn music. A people freeze, a flash mob walking into a bank lobby, you know, just talking like this and stopping and holding that for a minute. Well, how do we maximize the participation both here and in Washington with Maine people? How do we bring out a big contingent here? Um, and we were thinking, well, we need to promote it. Uh, we're going to promote it. We're going to brainstorm how to promote it from first, first and foremost to other groups. So faith groups, nurses, teachers. We talked about having an art auction. If anybody here has contacts in the arts community, you are an artist, you know art, artists that might contribute one of their pieces for an auction. So our group is talking about engaging volunteers for our movement, why engage volunteers, what motivates volunteers to work with our groups, and engaging and retaining volunteers. I just want to acknowledge we are all mostly volunteers, so uh, this is about all of us. So why engage volunteers? We want new energy, new ideas to extend awareness to different communities that we currently don't reach, uh, to gain different skills among the group as well. Speak up, okay. Uh, also to get more work done. The more people that we have, the more work that we can do. Uh, develop leadership and avoid burnout because we know that the most committed volunteers can get a little bit uh, burned out on working on the same stuff all the time. We'll be challenging the power when we come. Power of the people. We'll be challenging the power when we come. Power of the people. We'll be challenging the power when we challenging the power. We'll be challenging the power when we come. Power of the people. Say something that's kind of minor, but to me is very important. I was one of the people at Kenny Bunk that started Save Our Water, and we managed to keep Nestle out of our community. Woo! And so please don't get Poland Spring bottled water. Right. That's not who we are. Right. If you can hear me, clap your hands. If you can hear me, clap your hands twice. We're going to set up to take a group photo now. So if people would move toward the front.